Here we go again. It is reported that Jadon Sancho will not return if Ten Hag stays at Manchester United. Manchester United are ready to take a 30 millions of pounds hit on Jadon Sancho. The player is refusing to return unless boss Eric Ten Hag is sacked. The winger, signed from Borussia Dortmund for 73 millions of pounds in 2021, is back on loan at the German outfit after his spectacular bust-up with e Thief. And Sunsport understands Dortmund are ready to offer 35 millions of pounds to make the deal permanent this summer. United Chiefs have given up on any reconciliation between Ten Hag and Sancho. The 23-year-old effectively called Dutchman, Ten Hag a liar, after the Old Trafford manager said he had not performed well in training. Sancho refused to apologize and was made to train with the academy players before moving to Dortmund in January, where he has started to recover his form. United's new part owner, Sir Jim Ratcliffe, has given no assurances to Ten Hag that he will be in charge next season and the club are closely watching Sancho's performances in Germany. Meanwhile, Mohamed Kudus's stunning solo goal for West Ham has left Manchester United fans fuming. Supporters have claimed they will never forgive Eric Ten Hag for not signing the former Ajax midfielder. Ten Hag instead brought Antony to Old Trafford after his appointment in 2022, and Kudus showed United what could have been in the Europa League on Thursday. The Ghanaian scored twice as the Hammers thrashed Freiburg 5-0 to overturn their first-leg deficit and reach the quarterfinals. His first goal was a stunning solo effort, which saw him dribble from his own half before scoring. He later added West Ham's fifth to wrap up a dominant display at the London Stadium. Reacting to the goal on social media, one fan wrote, I will never ever forgive Ten Hag for coaching both Kudus and Antony, and choosing Antony to be the 100 millions of euros signing. Another added, Ten Hag saw this every day, then proceeded to go with Mount and Antony over him. On the other side, Manchester United are willing to pay Gleison Bremer's 43 millions of pounds release clause, its claim tonight. But Chelsea, Tottenham and Real Madrid are also being linked to the Juventus centre-back. The former Torino star, 26, has won three Brazil caps, and he's now become Juve's star defender, attracting growing interest from rival clubs this season. Elsewhere, Manchester United have been backed to stun Spurs with a summer move for their lone striker Timo Werner. Tottenham have been in pole position to make the ex-Chelsea strikers switch from RB Leipzig permanent in the summer for around 13 millions of pounds. The Germany striker, 28, has notched two goals and two assists in eight games for Spurs. That's despite his disappointing two years at Stamford Bridge, ending with a return to Leipzig in 2022. And reports tonight claim United are now keen, again and again. Could McTominay replaceable? Yes. Despite a superb goal-scoring season, Scott McTominay could be heading for the exit doors at Old Trafford this summer. According to iNews, the Scotland International is seen as replaceable and could be one of a number of players who are moved on at the end of the season. McTominay has netted eight times already this term, which is more than he has ever managed in a single campaign before. Meanwhile, Manchester United fans are hoping for a busy summer following the arrival of minority owner Sir Jim Ratcliffe. However, according to journalist Ben Jacobs, the club and their new investors have only approved one signing so far. The Red Devils are said to be happy to try their hand at signing Crystal Palace winger Michael O'Lease with all parties approving the potential arrival. On the other side, Manchester United have two places up for grabs versus Liverpool. Rasmus Hoyland could return for Man United this weekend, but there could be uncertainty over the 11th man. It is not usually a national team coach who delivers the most consequential item of team news at Manchester United. Kasper Yulmund was the exception. Obvious, Rasmus will play on Sunday against Liverpool and must go through the match well, the Denmark coach said. That's what we expect. We are in contact with United. I have talked to Eric and we expect it to happen. United confirmed the returns of Mason Mount 
and Aaron Wan-Bissaka to first team training on Tuesday. Hojlund was not visible in the imagery or footage the club released, but he is in the Denmark squad for their friendlies against Switzerland and the Faroe Islands this month. The England squad announcement is later today and Harry Maguire is expected to make the cut. Maguire has not played in nearly three weeks, but Ten Hag indicated he and Hoyland would be available for the FA Cup quarter-final at Old Trafford. Both attended the United Players and Staff's team bonding meal at the Ivy in Spinning Fields on Wednesday night. Unfortunately for rookies, Toby Collier and Habib Ogane, their substitute stints are about to end. United are due to have a fullish squad against Liverpool with Juan Bissaka, Maguire and Hodgland slated to return to the matchday 20. Mount had been penciled in to return from a four-month layoff after this month's internationals against Brentford on March 30th, but he will have had a full week's training, provided there are no setbacks. And who partners Rafael Varane? Johnny Evans's stock is so high again that United hit the skids when he limped off in the Manchester derby. A diligent recovery and ice baths ensured he started six days later against Everton. Evans earned another standing ovation when he was substituted. The Evergreen Evans, 36, would have had an eight-day breather between matches, but he has been omitted from the Northern Ireland squad with an apparent knock. He was excellent against Liverpool at Anfield during United's creditable goalless draw in December. Had Luke Shaw not succumbed to another muscular injury, Ten Hag might have picked the same back four. Ten Hag has abandoned the concept of a pecking order at centre half. Varane started one match in 13 as Evans, Lindelof and Shaw played ahead of him at centre half. Ten Hag has also contradicted his right-side left-side preference by starting Varane, pitted against Maguire for the right side of defense, on the left. Varane has been injury-free for more than three months, he was unwell for the defeat to West Ham two days before Christmas, and he defied doubters to start two games in a week against Nottingham Forest and City a fortnight ago. He has started in 14 of United's past 16 fixtures. Maguire had a variable four-game run in February that consisted of a clean sheet, a man of the match award, a booking, a halftime hooking, and a goal in defeat to Fulham. His first team status was revoked when Ten Hag dropped him against Liverpool in August 2022, and he did not start in either of the Anfield encounters. The last time Delot and Juan Bissaka were both available, the latter started at left-back against Tottenham in January. Ten Hag picked a reverse-back four that day, with Juan Bissaka at left-back, Varane as the left-sided centre-back, Evans on the right, and Delot at right-back. There is an outside chance of a repeat against Liverpool. Delote and Juan Bissaka were in the same lineup for the 4 0 surrender under Ralph Rangnick at Anfield in April 2022, but as wingbacks. Ten Hag has never picked a back three formation 101 games into his United tenure, and it would be a shock if he did this weekend. Juan Bissaka's athleticism against a front line of Mohamed Salah, Luis Diaz, and Darwin Nunes is essential. Lindelof and Evans are not the most durable or quickest of partnerships, and Salah, a substitute against City last Sunday, is bound to be a starter this Sunday. For United's sake, Yulmund has to be right.